I hope you like lots of math and Xenoblade 2 spoilers, cause that's all I've got to talk about today. The first thing is calculating the actual canon heights for basically anything we want to in the game if we had enough time. Yeah, we can do that now, and it's all because no one really paid attention to the fact that the Pyra and Mithra figurines are actually scale models and not just, this is a figure of the thing. On the official website, they're both listed as being about 210 millimeters in height and a 1 7th scale model. That means that the figure is exactly 1 7th the size the actual character would be if they were real. Now, unfortunately, the poses for both of them are leaning over in like a running position with a sword outstretched, and because of the way the sword tip is, that's actually the highest point on the figurine. So, it's a little difficult to measure, and you're gonna see my pixel measurements on screen right now. The red bar is the um, actual measurement of a combination of four different lines on Mithra's body, just covering up the different parts, like one was the leg, one was the lower part of the back, one was the upper part of the back, and then the top one was the head and neck. So, since different parts of her body are at different angles, I had to do that to get the most accurate thing, because anything else should show up as significantly shorter, and the... It's a little bit complicated, but basically, I covered her in four lines to sort of accurately describe what her height would be, and then compared that to measuring from the tip of the sword down to the ground, which is, I believe, the bigger of the black lines. The smaller black line is an incorrect measurement of height. So, we got that. Or, no, sorry, the bigger black line was the incorrect height measurement, the smaller black line is the height of the figure. So, by comparing the height of the figure to the pixel measurements of what Mithra's actual height would be, I just use her because there's a better camera angle to get all those measurements from, I was able to basically calculate a proportion, as in, how tall is her actual body compared to the height of the figure, and then use the fact that we already know the figure is 210 millimeters tall to calculate her actual height pretty reasonably. Honestly, the hardest part of all of this was the pixel measurements, because the actual equation after that was surprisingly easy. Just divide two numbers and then divide again to get the actual measurement in millimeters. And then converting to units that people actually use to measure people's heights, I got approximately 163 centimeters, or a little bit under 5 feet 6 inches, which makes a lot more sense than you'd think. I was getting a couple really short numbers beforehand because I was measuring her height wrong. I, I, like, I was getting under 5 feet. I think my original measurement was like 130 something centimeters. It was really off, but that's actually a pretty average human height and without going into all of the lore behind why blades are humanoid and all that stuff, it does actually make a lot of sense and basically you can now use the Aegis as a measuring stick to measure everything else in the game as long as you've got a camera angle that shows the full size of both her and what you want to measure, and they're the same distance away from the camera. So, I didn't go and do this for everything, because I didn't want to go and do this for everything. I just wanted to give a measuring stick that people could use to measure other things in the future if they wanted. So, I only did it two more times. The first one was for Rex, which was actually surprisingly really hard to do, because I didn't want to have to use her actual portraits to scale measurements off of and stuff in case the portraits are proportioned differently than the model. And besides, once all the models are ripped, you could just use those to scale all the other characters off of anyway. But I did get a couple cutscene screenshots that do show Rex and I think it's Pirate in both of them. You're going to be seeing it on screen, so it doesn't really matter. Um, the same distance away from the camera walking next to each other. So using that, I just averaged the two of them since I know I would have gotten something slightly different, and I got Rex's height to be 145 centimeters. He's pretty short. He's one of those 15-year-olds that hasn't hit his growth spurt yet. We're gonna go with that. Of course, because it's me, I just decided to test the method out again and measured Finch's height. If you include the big feathers on top of her head as part of her height and not, like, effectively spiking her hair up, She's 156.5 centimeters, so she's a lot taller than Rex is, believe it or not, if you count that. If not, she's a bit shorter. And then we move into a bit of a wishful thinking sort of physics -y calculation thing that I wanted to do just to see if the developers thought of this, basically. It's explicitly mentioned that it takes, quote-unquote from Klaus, countless millennia for life to re-evolve after he, like, reseeded the Cloud Sea with core crystals and stuff, so... 
it was obviously the game supposed to be set a significantly long time after the 21st century. So I wanted to see if the night sky in the game reflected it, and not by the constellations being different or something, as the stars move and go in different directions and stuff, and that will inevitably happen a long time in the future, but something that's a little more noticeable, and that's the size of the moon. Because the moon is actually moving away from Earth at a rate of about 4 centimeters per year. And because of that, over really long periods of time, it will actually appear to be smaller. So, me, judging by the amount of time it took life to evolve from when it started to current life now being a couple billion years, I figured that if this was accurate, then the moon would actually appear smaller in the sky as compared to the way it is now, and if it was smaller in a significant way, I'd be actually able to calculate the time difference by comparing it to the size it is now, and there's a very easy, only like two or three step equation for determining the distance of something based on how big it appears in the sky, if it's a circular or spherical object. So I was just going to use that and then move the distance based on the, then just plug the distance into the fact that the moon is retreating at four centimeters a year and use that to see how much time had passed since it was the size it is now because we do get a statement of the in-game universe year in game uh, i believe it's four thousand something it's something in the low four thousands like under 4100 but that's obviously not either ad continuing into this new era or the amount of time since the klaus experiment because that implies that klaus can't count to four and if he couldn't count to four he wouldn't be able to do any of the technology stuff that he does do, so... Uh, I think that's gonna... that's just an all-rest calendar thing. So, I wanted to see if... oh, it's a... Uh, no, it's a large amount of thousands of years since the 21st century, so... Is the moon actually smaller? First thing is no. Second thing is, I don't actually know the field of view of Xenoblade 2, so I don't know the amount of the, like, entire dome of the sky that's visible in front of you at once. Um, so you can't actually get an accurate measurement of the angular diameter of the moon. You can do the apparent diameter of the moon just by pixel measuring and scaling it to the height of a character, but the apparent diameter isn't useful for the calculation I wanted to do. I needed the angular diameter, unfortunately. Without the field of view being known, there's no way to tell for sure but it is actually possible, even though it's obviously supposed to take place after the present day, to calculate what time in the past the game would have had to take place for the moon to be the size it shows up to be. So this would have to be millions of years before now for the moon to be that size, even though time is obviously thousands, if not millions of years after now in game. It was just an artistic choice to make the moon bigger so you could like actually see it in stuff. Again, without knowing the field of view, I couldn't tell the actual angular diameter of the moon, but by substituting a bunch of different numbers that I know different games use for the field of view in, I was able to plug that into everything and basically get this graph, which is basically the uh, amount of millions of years in the past the game would have to take place for the moon to be that size, given a certain amount of field of view. So I used 45, 60, 90, and 120 degrees, because I know different games use those for different things, and I'm not sure exactly what Xenoblade 2 does. So that ranges from a little over 6 million to a little under 9 million years in the past, where the game would have to take place. This isn't part of any theory or thing, this was just science for the sake of science, because why not? And if you're interested in stuff like this, then sure, you got to see that. And if you're not, then why are you still watching anyway? Now, there's one last thing that I could do with the character heights that doesn't involve a lot of annoying pixel measurements or stacking multiple copies of the Aegis on top of each other in order to see how tall Gormod is or whatever, because I, I didn't really want to do that, and that is to calculate the acceleration due to gravity the game uses in its physics engine. Now, games actually usually use a higher acceleration than Earth does and just make the characters jump higher than an actual human ever possibly could, because if they used Earth's gravity or something realistic, if they went up very high, it would take them a really, really long time to come back down. The jumping would be really floaty, and even in non-platformer games, jumping like that wouldn't be fun. Which is, ironically, why I, I don't remember someone's calculated this. I think maybe the Game Theory video on Mario Odyssey and the moon 
problem thing uh, did that, but I'm pretty sure the gravity of the moon in Mario Odyssey even is still slightly stronger than real Earth's gravity is, and you study how floaty you are there, so that's basically why they do stuff like that. So, I already knew going in that this wasn't going to be accurate to how Earth actually is, especially since they weren't accurate with the moon thing, so they wouldn't be accurate with something like this. Although, the world tree and the orbital ring around the first low orbit station is actually completely physically possible. I might do a video on that in the future, but I just felt like calculating it. So, I just had Rex jump once and both tell the amount of time it took for him to fall and the uh, amount of height he went up because if you know both of those you could just use the really simple kinematics equations that are like the first thing you learn in a high school physics class to solve for the acceleration due to gravity and even more conveniently a character's maximum jump height is the same as rex's height so i didn't need to think much at all on this one and it turns out that the acceleration due to gravity is 23.67 meters per second squared if you don't know anything physics-y like that, basically, gravity on all rest is 2.4 times as strong as gravity on Earth is. But that's only if you use real time, if you use our time. Because in-game time is completely different. It runs at a rate of about a second per minute in-game. So he'd actually be falling 60 times slower in-game universe than he appears to for us. So, and I couldn't just multiply or divide this answer by 60 in order to get that because there is a squared term in there. So, if you solve for g in in-game time, you instead get an acceleration due to gravity of 0.0055 meters per second squared, which is tiny. For reference, that's slightly less than the gravity on Phobos, the moon of Mars, which is only 27 kilometers long at its longest point. So yeah, that's a really, really small amount of gravity if you go by game time. Although again, obviously since the physics engine is more of a gameplay thing than a story thing and the players play in real time, it kind of makes sense for it to be different this way. But just as a thought experiment, the escape velocity of Phobos is 11.39 meters per second. And that's significantly less than Usain Bolt's world record running speed, so he could achieve escape velocity from both Phobos and Allrest using in-game time just by running really fast off a cliff, so wrap your head around that one. And until next time, this is Luxon, signing off.